Today we're doing a titration of 3% hydrogen peroxide with potassium permanganate. We're going to determine whether the 3% is an accurate measurement. We have the two chemicals there plus the sulfuric acid, which is a six molar. You have a burette clamp, a 50 milliliter burette. Here we have a hot plate with a stir bar. Uh, and if you read carefully, I think the stir will make it stir and the heat will make it heat. So we're only turn up a little bit to get it warm. This stir plate is discolored, so we put a white piece of paper on it so we can see the color change. Here's a 50 milliliter burette, a disposable pipette, a stir bar, uh, a second disposable pipette, uh, a couple of storage beakers that are clean to hold the chemicals we need. We need a ring stand. Uh, there's a six molar sulfuric acid. We need to use that in excess for the reaction to happen and to keep the manganese from becoming manganese dioxide. We're going to pipette in uh, five milliliters in this case. I think what is going to be shown is going to be a 10 milliliter pipette. We're going to plop in the stir bar and we're going to add a big squirt or two from a disposable pipette of this sulfuric acid. So in the Erlenmeyer flask, which by the way, an Erlenmeyer flask keeps it from splattering so much, you have the five milliliters of the peroxide and a couple of squirts of the sulfuric acid. In the burette, you have it filled and also burped, so all the air is out of it, and it's lowered down to right at the zero mark. The potassium perm permanganate is super dark it's, it's almost opaque. So in this case, we may want to read the top of the meniscus only because we can't see the bottom. As long as you're consistent, it won't matter. Now that we have the peroxide and the acid heated up and the stir bar in there, we're going to start adding the potassium permanganate to it. Notice the color goes away, which means the permanganate reacted. As long as it keeps reacting, the color will go away. The moment it stops reacting, the color will persist. We want to find it so one drop changes from colorless to pink. That would be the equivalence point and also the end point. The end point is the point of color change. And the equivalence point is when all the reactants have gone away and you have no excess. If we keep adding the permanganate and it reacts, then we have an excess of the peroxide. If we have the permanganate persisting, then we have an excess of the permanganate. If we can make it so one drop changes it, then that's where we want to be. We've already done the preliminary math so that we have a rough idea of where it's going to be. You can do a drop by drop titration to understand the ratios of the volumes. Or if you think it's really going to be 3%, you can do the math to figure out what volume of the, per, of the permanganate you need. Your instructor to, should tell you what is the molarity of the potassium permanganate. That is supposed to be a given and understood to be correct. As you can see, the color is persisting longer and longer. And at this point, it stops changing, which means we have used up all the peroxide. We are probably only one or two drops off of this equivalence point. Now there's one little drop still kind of sitting there. It's already past the stopcock, so it's already been measured. So we're going to go ahead and drop it in anyway. It won't make any difference. It's already been measured uh, by putting the drop in. You haven't lowered it. Now that we're at the equivalence point, we're going to read the number and we're done.